mass in grams. That is the number of moles. Just one mark, that makes sense. That's why it was easier than I thought. Copper ethanoate is made by reacting copper to carbonate with ethanoic acid. You make carbon dioxide and water. That's quite a nasty question because that's almost like National 5 stuff. We haven't done that in a long time. Where metal carbonate makes a salt and CO2 and water. Ionic formula. Oh, come on, guys. Why? You, uh, nobody in chemistry cares about ionic formula. But if you're interested, what you're supposed to do is put the charges next to the ions. And ethanoate ion CH3COO. That's a charge of one minus, and there will be two of them to balance up the two plus. This is another one that Miss McLeod was raising with me. Three marks for making, describing how to make up a standard solution. So step one would normally be weigh the mass required, but they say that anyway. Okay, so it doesn't make it wrong. Step two is dissolve that mass in a small volume of deionized water. Step three, pour into a standard flask or a volumetric flask. Would you have to see a 250 ml volumetric flask? Maybe. I'd love to see how the marking scheme allocates marks here. Step four, after you poured it into the flask, into the volumetric flask, you're supposed to rinse your beaker and your stirrer a couple of times with deionized water. Step five, make up to the mark with deionized water in the, in the 250 ml flask. And step six, mix it. I don't know how they're going to allocate three marks there. No idea, sorry. Not being very helpful in that one. It's a really unusual question. Titration. Draw a diagram of a pipette. Oh, sorry. That? Is that what they want? That's a pipette. Okay, moving on. Phenolphthalene is colourless and acid in neutral solutions with pink and alkali. Yes, it is. State the colour change they observed. Right, you start with alkali and you're dripping acid in, so therefore it would be colourless to pink. In fact, approximately the same pink as this pen. Fuchsia pink is how it's described in the textbooks. Tighter volumes, concordant. Concordant volumes, that's what they're looking for there. Three mark, tighter. Oh, it's the end of the question paper. Thank you for staying with me uh, for all this time, guys. God, I tell you, I need a drink of something. Coffee, of course. I, would, I wouldn't suggest anything else. I need a coffee. Um, so what's going on here? Oh, sorry about that. Goodness me, that's me. I lost half my hearing. Right, I always like to have a wee diagram of what's going where. There's my oxalic acid. There is my sodium hydroxide solution. So this is NaOH. Do we have some volumes? Titrating 25 ml samples, 0 0.025 litres. That's the volume in there. I know that because it's 25.0, it's a precise volume. Um, there's the concentration of the oxalic acid. It is 0 0.126 moles per litre. And we dropped in an average of 26.75 centimetres cubed. So 0 0.02675. Brilliant. Calculation for titrations, three stages. Stage one, dripped out the burette. So I'm going to pause this. Okay, stage one, moles are dripped out the burette. Concentration times volume gives us this moles of oxalic acid. Step two, ratio. Ratio is here. One oxalic acid reacts with two sodium hydroxide. So therefore that number there, we need to double it to create this number here. Sorry about the typo. And stage three, ask I, I usually say calculate whatever it is they're asking for. In this case, it is truly just a concentration. So concentration is moles over volume. We know the moles, we know the volume. And the final answer, therefore, of the paper, in fact, is 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.025. Zero point. You notice I didn't do any rounding, by the way. Kept all the numbers in between zero. Are we on camera for the final time? 0 0.2696. So therefore, to three significant figures, which is what they usually want, 270 moles per litre, which you don't even need to say because the, uh, the unit is in the question. Thank you so much for this, folks. This may or may not have been useful to you. Um, it's been interesting for me. Um, and we'll find out how many mistakes I made uh, in August.
Bye-bye.